I knew it was going to be a difficult transition back into working days. It always is the first week when I go from nights to days. And uh, today is no different day. Luckily, it's a short day, so it's not a big deal. But it is currently, as you can see on the clock back there, you can't see that. It's 4 o'clock in the morning, guys. I um, woke up early, and I normally people would wake up early and go, Oh, I got two hours. I'm just going to go back to bed for two more hours and get more sleep. But I've learned from past, if you do that... You're you're gonna wake up at your proper time and feel groggier than ever. So I figured, forget it, I'll stay awake. We're only working until noon today. It's gonna be an easy shift because it's New Year's Eve. Chances are people are still on vacation. The real uh, brutal shift will be next Monday because I guarantee that's when people are coming back to work. Oh, and welcome to my vlog. So I figured we'd start the day off with a little bit of eggs. Make some eggs, some coffee, just have breakfast. You ever had to use this technique on a bottle that's nearly empty? It's called a gravitational well. Basically, you're forcing everything to the uh, little spray tip. Works great on ketchup too. Get every last bit out before it farts and makes a mess. You know, you really gotta give it a hard wonder, right? Like, who one day thought, hey, that chicken just farted out a white turd. Oh look, it broke open and there's stuff inside of it. Wonder if I put that in a frying pan and then cooked it up and then ate it, if it would taste good. Like, somebody out there went through that entire process of thought and boom, Eggs for breakfast was born. Well, they probably had it for any meal, but I'm just saying, the eating of eggs was born. Probably not just chicken eggs either. They probably tried all sorts of eggs, like pigeon eggs and lizard eggs and who knows what other, other kind of eggs out there that they've tried, but you know, you know they tried them to see if they're edible and delicious. Hell, at some point they probably even ate fertile chicken eggs and got sarsaparilla and didn't live to tell about it. But that's basically what I'm getting at is... So, same with the cows and milk. It's like one day somebody went, huh, look at those things hanging off that cow. I'm gonna give those a hydraulic suck and see what it tastes like. I don't know, stuff like that always made me wonder, like, how people came up with what they came up with to get stuff done. You know, between like uh, eggs and who decided one day to cook a cow and make steak. And, you know, that's probably why cannibalism was was a thing because they realized, well, if you can eat a cow, and a cow is essentially the same thing as a human, right? Why can't you eat a human? So one day somebody decided to kill somebody and cook them up and down the hatch and was like, oh yeah. This feels really wrong. I could probably go to prison for this. And then they did. And that's where prisons were invented. Not a true story. All right, while those eggs cook up, I'm going to make myself a baby pie coffee. A little bulletproof. One of these uh, cure eggs from Wally World going. These are actually really good. And I remember seeing these at Walmart for dirt cheap. So I'm thinking when those boxes run out, I might buy some more. Like, I wouldn't say dirt cheap, but they're way cheaper than going to, uh, you know, the grocery store and buying the Folgers or buying the other more name brand ones. That's probably why they call them Great Value. I just realized that I'm drinking a Great Value coffee with Great Value Stevia and Walmart branded Great Value friggin' heavy cream. This is a Great Value coffee! You want to know how I know that this Keurig is super 10 times better than my old Keurig? Is that for making the Bulletproof coffee? It didn't all fit in the mug. <laughs> so I had to drink the rest of it. But eggs are ready. See, there's my egg. And coffee's ready. See, there's my coffee. Did I even get it in the shot? There's my coffee. It's kind of hard to see that screen. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and head upstairs, eat my breakfast, drink my coffee, and uh, I'll chime back in when I got something to chime about, okay? That's what we're going to do. Breakfast was freaking delicious, but I want another kefafi. I'm not gonna bulletproof this one, but I just want another kefafi. I did mention yesterday that I wanted to go to the bank, and I didn't go to the bank because I wanted to deposit some cash, some good old Christmas money. Yeah, that didn't get put in the video either, but that's okay. That's a big old, big old nunya. And then I wanted to go to Best Buy to buy that Google Mesh. Uh, the Wi-Fi system so I can get better Wi-Fi in the house because it's a real pain in the dick when you're down here listening to Spotify on the Google Home and it's cutting in and out because the Wi-Fi is about as stable as nitroglycerin in a paint mixer. And I know people who bought the uh, other branded ones like the Linksys Mesh and the D-Link Mesh and the TP-Link Mesh and they all said it was the damnest best investment they ever did because nowadays these stupid internet companies are giving you a router with built-in Wi-Fi rather than just giving you a freaking modem 
I'm letting you supply your own router. Is it just me or does every Keurig sound like it just had a bad night at Taco Bell, eh? Just starts farting out of coffee. I'm just gonna restock the water on this thing. It doesn't have as big of a reservoir as the old Keurig did, but it's also it also doesn't have the same footprint on the cupboard as the old one did. You can get about three coffees out of the reservoir. But anyway, um, what I like about the Google Mesh system that I noticed that only the other one that supports it is uh, the Linksys, is the Google Mesh system will allow you to kick it into access point mode where it'll work with an existing internet router. I looked at a few others and the problem is is they don't support access point mode. You're probably wondering what's the difference between access point mode and router mode. Explain. See, when you have an access point versus a router, a router will assign the internet protocol addresses to each one of your computers through dynamic host control protocol or DHCP if you will when it's in router mode, when it's actually being used as a router. When you have a router in access point mode, it doesn't do that. It literally acts as an extension to your existing router. You have to have a device on your network that's assigning a DHCP and doing all that work for you. In my case, the Bell router will be doing all that work for me where the mesh, all it'll do is host the Wi-Fi setup. So you do lose a lot of features. Like apparently this mesh has a built-in uh, antivirus, a built-in cybersecurity, uh, which will basically block known bad pages and you know, adware, malware, all that nonsense. Where, which is, uh, let me tell you, it's actually pretty cool. Like I subscribe to a service known as NordVPN and what NordVPN does, it is it generates another IP address so that it's not my home IP address, it's a whole other IP address. And it has cybersecurity built into it as well as some other features. So sites like, uh, I don't know, I can't even name off a site, but like well-known bad sites that are designed to put software on your computer and cause problems automatically get stopped at the front door and don't even make it through. This is a damn good thing to have because you want to protect your computers. You don't need to get a virus every five seconds because you clicked on a wrong link on a Google search. It's perfect. It, it's, I wish ISPs did this, but then if they did that, imagine what else they could block. Oh, we don't want you to torrent. We're blocking everything that involves a torrent. We're just going to start blocking and restricting. Yeah, we can't have that. Can't have that. So the whole reason why I want to go with the mesh system is currently I'm using this old Asus router. Yeah, I think that's Asus. I'm using this old Asus router as an access point. This guy here, it's an RT56. Yeah, it has BGN and AC1200. But the problem is, is it's so freaking old that the signal can barely hit downstairs straight below where it's sitting right now. Like if I take my phone in 2.4 gigahertz mode, I go to the back door, which literally is like right there. Okay, like, like right there. I have about two bars on my phone because the Wi-Fi has a hard time getting through the floor and getting through everything. What these wireless meshes do, which is nice, is you put them around the house and they make like a wireless relay system and they'll boost each other, which is friggin' sweet. They have a lot of cool technology like wireless beaming and so on and so forth. So this will resolve my problem of not having good Wi-Fi. And I'm hoping by doing this, it's gonna give me good Wi-Fi outside because like i said i want to live stream the whole painting of the car because i think that could be kind of cool and i'm going to live stream it straight to youtube not to twitch which i think would be cooler mine is going to make for like a long ass video but it is what it is so yeah anyway i just made a coffee i'm watching some letter kenny just chillaxing before work i still got like three hours before i got to be in there which surprisingly enough will go by fast and then i gotta put in four hour shift and then afterwards like i said i'm gonna go to the bank deposit my christmas bills and then we're gonna head over to uh best buy because uh yeah i don't really like walking around with this much cash on me i already already checked with google to make sure the bank is open today seeing how it's new year's eve and they open because of new year's eve 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. I guess bankers need to go home and get their drunk on because tomorrow they be closed. I'm gonna fire up the truck. There will be no driving vlogs as per, um, there are some questions about the whole operating a camera while driving. Sure, you can have one of those dash cams, which, you know, that's fine, but 
you know, filming a video while driving does probably qualify as distracted driving. So just to avoid any, oh, good stretch. And kitty just did a stretch. Uh, just to avoid any complications with any obligations of the uh, police participations, I'm going to cease all activities on the driving vlogs and uh, just not bother, to, you know, to avoid any sort of nonsense. So that's going to happen. But we'll put in our work, then we'll go to the bank, deposit the Christmas money, and then we'll go to uh, Best Try and pick up the Google Wi-Fi. Um, I did a speed test on my Wi-Fi. Now here's a problem I've been having with that router. She's old. I bought that router back in 2013. Uh, before that, I was using this D-Link 8 something. Uh, it didn't have AC, but it was wireless uh, BGN and uh, draft N 150 megabits per second. And it was pretty good. It was a reliable router, did a great job, and just, you know, was able to make the datas do what datas do. And that's just the data. Well, when she left, she took the router with her because she bought it and I didn't have a router at the time I was using a, an old dirty 601 that would disconnect every two seconds because it was just a big friggin pile of crap so what I ended up doing was I went out and bought that Asus router it's currently going into 2019 that router is six years old and she's pretty much spent which is why I want to upgrade to the Google Wi-Fi now on my current Wi-Fi, I have an issue connecting to the end channel and holding a good reliable connection. It'll connect, hold it for about 10, 15 minutes, and then the Wi-Fi becomes unpredictably horrible and starts dropping and disconnecting and speed bumping. And, and it's always, uh, well, that, that actually, I shouldn't say always done that. It recently started doing that, which is why I got all the Google Homes off the wireless end, even though they can do wireless end, I got them all off the wireless end on the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi because it's more reliable but slower. When I did a speed test on wireless N, now I have 1.5 gigabits down on my uh, internet and one gigabit up, well 900 megabits up. Theoretically with my AC system that I have set up in the house so I can get uh, internet through the, uh, the power line, I can do about 300 megabits a second from the bedroom where the, where the main intake for the internet is to the computer room on the wi-fi i'm only seeing about 40 megabits a second down and up which is not too bad for wi-fi but should be better on draft on uh, ac even on draft n so i've I, I did some research online and saw a couple people doing speed tests and that and they've gotten some serious gains by switching to this Google this Google Wi-Fi. Now, one thing I'm going to lose out on is this Wi-Fi only has, this is what kind of sucks, it only has one Ethernet port coming out of the back of it, which means I'm going to have to install uh, a switch off of that for upstairs to basically control the, uh, like to hook it up to my desktop and actually I might not even need to. I could probably just run a wire right off of it to the desktop. I don't know. We'll see what we got to do to get things did. But um, yeah, the, lots of benefits from it. And what's nice is all of them, all, all the extra pods have two other jacks on them. One of them is your input for your router from your internet, like your home modem router, whatever it may be. And the other one is a dedicated ethernet switch. Now the one that's an input for your home router, you can also set that to be another dedicated ethernet switch so for instance i set one up down here say somewhere over here on the tv i can run a, de a dedicated ethernet to that pc when i fix it as well as to my sony ps4 sure it's going over wi-fi like that's how the bridge is being made but people have reported that it's a lot more stable than using wi-fi because you're not relying on the radio built into the ps4 you're relying on the hardware but people have said that the link between those hockey pucks is a hell of a lot better than anything they've ever used in the past, like wireless extenders and all that other nonsense. This mesh system actually works a hell of a lot stronger. So here's hoping, because for 329 bucks at a discounted price, that's a lot of money to throw down for some friggin' Wi-Fi and better internet connectivity. Just putting that out there. The other thing I was thinking about doing was getting some Cat 6 and running a hard line from the bedroom to the computer room right through the wall and plugging it directly into that Wi-Fi router and then switching that out and getting rid of that AC system, that uh, power line system, mainly because of the 300 megabit cap on it. Not that that's a big deal. My internet's still pretty snappy in the uh, computer room, but if I can get more, 
wouldn't wouldn't I want more? Anyway, I'll talk to you guys after work when we're on our way to actually when we're at Best Buy. So until then, peace the frig out. All right, people, I'm home. Mario just went outside and did his business, and I got some business to do of my own. We got the Google Wi-Fi. He already went to the bank, deposited the cash, and then went over to Best Try, picked it up, and uh, bumped into my parents while I was there. No idea what they were shopping for, but they were shopping. What we're gonna do, shouldn't have left that running, that's for sure. I need a Coke. I'm gonna grab a Coke, and uh, I'm just gonna sit down and relax for a minute, because, uh, let me tell you, the bank was way too busy. Way too many people there. The amount of people that don't pay their bills through web banking amazes me that actually go into the bank with their debit card and the bill in hand and will pay it at the teller versus investing in a cell phone that can do internet banking. It blows my freaking mind, people. <coughs> have a can of Coke. Yeah, it took me a moment. I got off work at noon, 1.30 now. I think I spent about a half an hour at the bank and then another half an hour at the freaking mall and then another bit of time just trying to get home. A lot of traffic out there for, for New Year's Eve at noon, but we're home. So I'm gonna have some Coke and watch some YouTubes. Thought about making a separate video about this Google Home Wi-Fi, you know, one dedicated to it. But then I realized I don't give a shit about views, so it's going in the vlog. Well, here it is. When you buy the three pack, you get a really long, weird looking box. Uh, it's wrapped in plastic, so I got to cut into that. So let's go ahead and do that. So according to this, I could have easily got away with one hockey puck because with one, they say you can do 500 to 1500 square feet. With two, you can do 1500 to 3000. And with three, you can do 3,000 to 4,500. My house is 900 square feet. So theoretically, one was more than enough, but I believe in overkill, because overkill is better. You get three Wi-Fi points in the box, three power adapters, one ethernet cable, a quick start guide, and a warranty card. Ain't that pretty. A Little bit of tech specs for all you monkeys out there who give a crap. So you get three AC 1200 routers, two by two wave, two Wi-Fi, Okay, whatever the hell that means. Expandable wi mesh Wi-Fi. Well, better friggin' be, that's what I bought. A simultaneous dual band Wi-Fi, 2.4, 5 gigahertz, supporting tri IE, triple E, A, B, G, and A, C. TX beam forming. That means basically it'll focus on, you know, devices that have Wi-Fi rather than just hosing the room down with radiation. And there you go, two gigabit ethernet ports that can be, yeah, so you can be carried to WAN or LAN. And it has a bunch of security shit that I mentioned earlier, so that's kind of cool. Care how it works? Pretty simple. Plug in your first Google Wi-Fi point, and you place additional points around the house, and you use your cell phone to configure it. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Let's crack into the box. The cardboard part on the top is just a hollow sleeve that the box in the bottom slides into. It's got a little piece of tape keeping it closed. Just gotta pull that off and open it. Let's just pull that off and open it. And inside, we get three little Google Hockey Pucks. They're actually very freaking light. Underneath, you can see you got your two Ethernet ports and your USB-C power adapter. And yes, people, I have seen this powered by USB-C to USB-C cable off of a computer. Somebody actually had their computer running their router. So inside the box, this nice little form-fitted thing so the hockey pucks have somewhere to sit. And underneath you get three individual boxes. Probably all three contain the same stuff, which is a let's get started manual, a warranty manual. I'm gonna take that out because I need to know what app I need to download. And inside of here is more than likely your USB power adapter, if it'll focus. It really doesn't want it. Could probably plug this into my cell phone and charge it. Anybody wanting specs? There are your specs. Five volts, one amp. I could theoretically charge my Asus cell phone with this. Take it back, I think that says three amps now. So, before I do any sort of changes, as you can see I'm on Wi-Fi right now, let's click the go button and let's just see how fast we get of a connection. Now keep in mind I have 1.5 gigabits. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's clocking in at about 42. So I have 1.5 gigabits down, 1.5 gigabits, or uh, 900 gigabits up. And I'm clocking in at about 4040, give or take a notch. So let's see if this new mesh system will actually make the Wi-Fi faster. Now keep in mind, oh, frig off with the ads. Oh my goodness, is this allowed to be on my channel because Google's already putting ads? 
Is this the definition of double ads? Because this is totally a Google ad on a Google added video with Google ads. But like, keep in mind, my router is just right there. So like, I'm literally sitting right beside the damn thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect that one there and hook up this one here and hope for the best. Oh yeah, and to configure all this snazz, you gotta download the Google Wi-Fi app. I forgot to mention that. So you probably should do that because you kind of need that. Alrighty, due to the cable length and all that there, I basically had to set it up over here. And look at that little ominous glow. It's like it's freaking talking to me. So you got the app all set up here. I don't know what it wants me to do. But no, you're not getting any stats, assholes. And get started. Oh, look. Windows already found the network. Good for Windows. Looking for your devices. It's right there, so you shouldn't have to look too far. This is the second time Google asked if it can have its permission to spy on me. Thank God this button's here. Wow, oh, that's almost mesmerizing. We, uh, we, oh, what? Ah, we're done. How about Wi-Fi? Okay, so now we need to update this point, so we'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll go from there. So that looks pretty good. It's 5 gigahertz. Our link state is 433 megabits per second. I'm starting to think 43 megabytes is as good as I'm gonna get, but let's hit go again. The reason why I say that is because 433 megabits per second. Whoa, never mind. Holy shit, dude. It's a little bit quicker than, uh, about almost four times faster. If we hit 200, that's a lot faster than what we were getting before off the old system. Okay, I take it back. This 120 would be definitely a lot quicker if I was not going through off wish that 120 megabits a second would be a lot faster if i wasn't going through the ac system so what i'm thinking is i'm off thursday and friday what we're going to try and do is we're going to go to uh staples and we will scoop up a long cable rip a hole through the wall have it come through and redo the entire ethernet topology of the house to basically negate the wireless uh the uh, ac system that doesn't seem to do the job so i'm gonna grab another one of these hockey pucks we're gonna head downstairs to the living room and we're gonna set her up down there and uh oh man i just realized something we're gonna have to reset up all the google homes because and every single wireless bulb and thing in this house because they no longer know what wi-fi to be on i didn't even think about that i just created way more work than i needed oh well it's something to do all right google hockey puck number two let's get it set up all right yeah i got the upstairs all set up i got the google home set up i got the google hockey puck set up down here now i gotta do redo all these lights the kitchen light and the light outside Let's do this. It's one pain in the ass, but at least these ones here are easy to set up versus the ones upstairs. They're a little bit more of a pain in the ass, but we're good. So now if I say set living room lights to 5%. You got it. Setting four lights brightness to 5%. Yay, yeah, yay. Yeah. Guess the light bulb outside has a thermostat because it knows it's 25.3 Fahrenheit and it's humid as frig out. My big question is, is how is the Wi-Fi going to be in the garage right now if I go out there with my phone? So obviously I have no signal strength as far as cell phone goes. Let's see how the Wi-Fi holds out. Calling for freezing rain tonight, people. Yeah, it's supposed to be freezing rain, so I got the wipers on the truck lifted. But let's go into the garage here. Turn on some Lumiere's. Get some brightness. My buddy's still supposed to come pick this thing up. Still hasn't. In the garage with the doors closed. Still getting full bars on the Wi-Fi. Now, keep in mind, I don't think my cell phone supports wireless AC. The only laptops I have that support wireless AC is that new Dell. But no, the uh, only laptop I have that supports wireless AC is the new Dell. And that wireless dongle I have plugged into the old Dell XPS 9000. So... The fact that both of those should be able to get some pretty decent atas, that's a good sign. Now the real question I have is how the hell do you do WPS on those Google Homes, on the Google Wi-Fi's I should say, so that I can hook up my cameras. <laughs> you can turn off the Wi-Fi to screw people over. That's funny. Alrighty, everything is set up, everything's working. Only thing I have I'm, I'm wondering about is am I gonna be able to connect? Where's my IP address over here? Ethernet. Oh, I hate Windows 10. Like, don't get me wrong, I like it, but I just hate the way it looks. Ugh, that's the problem. Okay, let me see if I can actually connect to my TeamSpeak right now. Because the router actually assigned a new IP address, because when you set up a mesh, you can't do access point mode. Okay, good, I can still connect to mine. Oh, thank frig. Okay. Oh man, that, that made me a little nervous, people. I thought for sure we weren't going to be able to. So what I need to figure out now is how the hell do I do WPS over this damn thing? Because I don't know. So apparently Google got rid of the WPS button because it's not secure. Like, I don't know, man. It's kind of hard for not to be secure. What is the 
they going to do if they're outside my house? They got to come into my house, press the button, and sync up their device. I can understand if I had friends over and they wanted on the Wi-Fi, but I would just give them the guest account. So I don't really understand whatever. So it's going to be more of a, a tricky situation to set up those cameras on Wi-Fi, like on the network. I have to think of a way to do this now. Son of a bitch. Anyway guys, I'm going to shut the vlog down here, Wi-Fi set up, everything's good. I also noticed every other damn YouTuber on the YouTubes is doing a YouTube rewind. So to not be a trendsetter, I decided not to because, well, who cares? And on that note, thanks for watching, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. <coughs> if you did, click that like button, any questions, comments, concerns down below they go. That burp was, uh, you know, part of Coke Zero. That's what it makes me do. Sound disgusting on mic. And until next time people, keep on vlogging.